Hey, what's going on everybody? Before we dig into this video, I just want to take a, a second and say, hey, big thanks to everybody that interacted, liked, thumbs up, and basically participated and let me know that, hey, you're considering or you have this lens when I did my 28 to 85 video. Just want to say it's really cool. And in the future, what I'm going to do when I do a lens video is I'm going to put like right up here, my Instagram and maybe, I don't know, hashtag John's junk because I would really like to see what you're getting out of the lens or the camera, whichever. Anyway, let's dig into this video. Today, we are going to talk about what? It's my notes, so I don't get lost. Give me a break. I'm old. We are going to talk about this guy right here, this lens specifically. This is the Nikkor S51.4. This is going to be five reasons why you need this lens. Reason number one. It's pretty. I mean, just look at it. All metal, all glass, thing of beauty. This is Kira Knightley at sunset on an alpine lake. Just amazing to look at. Reason number two, it's fast. It is a 1.4. I mean, look at that light hole on the back of that. That is enormous. Now, it's not a 1.2 or 0.95 or anything like that but the depth of field you're going to get out of a 1.4 on a full frame camera is just mental reason number three it's cheap this lens cost me 75 bucks actually it cost me more than that because it wasn't as advertised from the ebay seller i bought it off of he discounted it back to the price that these lenses typically go for the actual ais lenses go for about 140 which is still a uh, brand new 51.4 is going to set you back between 250 and 300 bucks 350 bucks that's for a used new model 51.4 and this is going to be better than those reason number four that you want the 51.4 Nikkor s the s stands for sept or seven it's got seven aperture blades so the bokeh is going to be nuts it's not going to be your typical weird five or six blade bokeh shape Seven blades makes for very nice bokeh. This lens does have very nice bokeh. It's a separate reason in and of itself, I suppose. Reason number four. The ant's got an amber coating on the front of it. I don't know if that's going to come across. It's very, very faint. This lens is optimized for black and white cameras from the 1960s. The amber coating cuts out some of the oranges and the reds and lets more blue light through to optimize the contrast on a black and white image. I have something crawling up my leg. Hang on a second. Ew. Reason number five, the history of this lens. This lens was big time in photojournalism in the 1960s. If somebody is shooting a 35 millimeter Nikon camera, chances are probably have one of these on it. Ken Rockwell's got a lot of information on his site about this lens. He calls it the Apollo era where this lens was used. Don't know if it got used to photograph any of the Apollo missions. I know this one didn't because it came from Japan. Reason number six. If you want a unique look for your photos, or maybe for your video, the, the crazy optics on this and the amber coating are going to give you kind of a weird, unique look. You can add that in post, or you can leave it be as is. I have a tendency to, to shift what is already there, so any kind of odd coatings or lens characteristics are going to come through. Reason number seven, it's sharp. It is ridiculously sharp. Assuming you nail the focus, here are a couple of cons, four of them. Con number one, no autofocus. My balls don't work right. I'm a little slow, I'm a little stupid. So working on autofocus is kind of difficult. This thing does have a relatively short throw. It does have a hard stop at infinity, which would make it nice for astrophotography. I should have put that in the pros. It's winding up in the cons, even though it's not a con. Anyway, if you have bad eyesight, maybe you're a little slow, a little stupid, the practice isn't there for you, this isn't the lens for you. It's it, it's going to be a bit of a pain to get it right. You're going to get frustrated. However, when you do nail it at 1.4, you're going to love yourself. Reason number two, you may want to avoid this lens. Barrel distortion, coma, uh, color contrast, fringing, all those nasty little words that they like to throw out there. This lens suffers from all of those. Bump it up to about 4, f4. Most of that goes away. But why would you want an f1.4 to shoot it at f4? Really? Really? Reason number three, you may want to avoid this lens. It does not have a declicked aperture. 
it's kind of loud. If you're shooting video with this, I don't know why people want to, shooting video want to change the aperture in the middle of a video. Change the depth of field, but everything else has to change too, and it, it's just going to look weird. So I think the clicky from the aperture clicky, not such a big deal, but people that shoot video want a declicked aperture ring. This does not have that. You could probably get it done, but yeah, this isn't that video. <clears throat> Reason number four. Weird color cast. I think we already covered that. It does have a weird color cast. Some people don't like that so much. Some people dig it. I like having weird lenses that do weird things. It's my thing. A lot of other people's things too. But if that's not your thing and you don't like having to correct for that in post, maybe this lens is not for you. Anyway, that is some reasons for, some reasons against buying the Nikkor S 51.4 lens. This lens will work on just about everything. It will make an image. Your metering won't work on some of your entry-level cameras, but if you have the ability in your camera to choose non-CPU lenses, this lens will do just fine. But really, honestly, you're gonna chimp every shot, so what difference does it make? If you're looking to buy one of these for your D3000 or D5000 series, you can go with the non-AI lens for the $75. However, if you're using this on a pro body that has the little clicky aperture thingy in there, it won't directly fit. You'll have to modify the lens, which is fairly easy. I can't cover that in this video. But barring all of that, this lens will work on just about every Nikon ever made. If you get the AI AIS version, it'll mount right up, it'll take an image, everything will work just fine. So that's five reasons, six, seven, eight reasons. I don't know how, how many reasons why you should consider this lens and a couple reasons why you shouldn't. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Reason number, what if it? I'm on the wrong page. <laughs>